Bruce Gonzalez from Prep Cal Track here with Jason Eichelberger. We're in Clovis, California for the 103rd annual CIF State Track and Field Championships. Been coming to these meets since uh, the 1990s. How about you, Jason? Uh, let's see, this will be number 14, I believe, for me. Uh, definitely excited to be here, excited here. You can kind of feel the excitement. And when we get here, we know what we're in store for. Should be a great show. We saw the track earlier today. It's in great shape. It looks brand new. If it's your first time here, you're in for a treat. They put on a great show here at Buchanan High School. I want to touch upon a little bit about this weekend, some of the main events we're looking forward to and the reasons why. Jason, you want to kick us off? Is there any particular event you're looking forward to the most? You know, obviously this year in terms of California, the sprints have been fantastic. Um, and we talk a lot on the boys' side. Uh, we can start there with the 100. Obviously, we know the headliner, Roderick Pleasant, Sarah High School. Uh, every time that he is in a starting block, th there's this sense of anticipation that is just palpable through the crowd. Um, obviously, will be a, a great thing to kind of see what he can do. Obviously, he comes into this maybe not 100%, which adds even maybe some more intrigue into that. You know, not only just the, the situation with Roderick and, he again, a little bit of an injury last weekend that he sustained at Masters, the thing that really intrigues me, all the attention on Roderick, but the number two sprinter in California history is right behind him. Yeah. Jordan Washington of Long Beach, Jordan. <laughs> and then not far behind him, we have Anthony Flowers of South Torrance, and he's coming on with a lot of improvement in recent weeks. The depth in the boys, Hunter, this year makes it the best event in the state meet. Fifteen athletes this year have gone 10.50 or faster in California when legal. Twelve of the 15 have survived and are competing this weekend, and only nine make it to the finals. <laughs> Rich, like you said, with that kind of depth, obviously you go into a qualifying portion of the state meet really looking for a great performance to set you up for the finals. Well, in that race, you might not be able to have that set up. You've got to move or else you could be on the outside looking in. Last note on that as far as sprints goes, in my experience over the years, a lot of times, whether it be the distances or the sprints, when the kids are focused on times, on records, they end up being too tense. They need to re relax, and as the famed coach uh, from the 1980s, 1990s, Tom Telez would say, relax and let the speed come out. These kids need to be relaxed, and if so, sprinters, when they're relaxed, the speed does come out. <laughs> Shifting over, how about to the... How about next up the field events? Any thoughts there? You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing, maybe on the girls' side, we can kind of touch a little bit on the, uh, the shot put in the discus. Um, a unique situation where you have a couple of athletes who not only are going for individual state championships, but could be the catalyst for a, a, a team championship as well. A fantastic situation with Notre Dame and Sherman Oak. Right now, there's five or six girls' teams that are in the hunt for the team championship, Notre Dame being one of them. But like you mentioned, those two girls carrying all the weight. And it's one thing to go ahead and, in a track event, have nine girls on the track, or in a distance race, 12, or 27 girls. In the field events, for every, for every round, you're that one athlete, and the pressure's on. You have to respond. So it's a different dynamic. Experience does play a role here. There's some veterans in the throws, but there'll be more pressure. Make no mistake, make no mistake about it on the girls from Notre Dame. Um, also, speaking of field events, one girl's gonna be very, very busy this weekend, <laughs> Megan Humphreys out of Castaic High School. Uh, obviously, when you get to this level, um, you're expected to compete on, on a high mark and a high level. She has the expectation to do well in not one, not two, not three, but four potential events in which she is expected to, to score and score pretty well. Um, and she has an opportunity to be a state champion for her own school, potentially. Obviously, a lot of things have to go right there, but still, when you carry that amount of expectation level, it's interesting to see how you manage that through the course of, of four different events. The thing about Megan Humphreys that I really like, so back in the 1980s, Wendy Brown out of Woodside High School, single-handedly, she won the state championship, <laughs> scored 38 points, three golds and a silver. If you look at Megan and what she's done this year, and remember, the other girls need to respond because Megan has already shown she has the ability to get the best mark. In the three field events, she already leads the state in two of them, and she's definitely in the mix in the third. The thing that really intrigues me is her 200. Mm -hmm. At first, admittedly, I thought, okay, she's pretty good, but not quite at the level she's going to need to be to cement a state team championship. In the last couple of weeks, I've been very impressed 
with the gear she's beginning to show. Because now, do I think that she's at the level of uh, maybe, for instance, a Rain Redman or something like that? Probably not. But the improvement she's shown lately, it makes me wonder, does she have more in the tank? Because she really caught my eye at the section finals. And of course, then she dropped that 23.55, I believe it was, wind dated at the Masters meet. So she's definitely surpassed what I thought she was capable of. Maybe this weekend should show us even more. And I was going to say, Rich, obviously when you get to this level, adrenaline and the expectation to do well, they also kick in. So you never know if she goes ahead, if she goes ahead and has a great uh, events and, and or a great result in some of the other events, maybe that spurs her in the 200 to do something that maybe she's not even expected to do. The event that I'm looking forward to the most on the girl side is the 800 meter run. <laughs> reason, reason being is you have an uh, outstanding age group, basically a legend in a sense, in Sadie Engelhart. And last year she was beaten by Mackenzie, Gr Mackenzie Brown of JV North. They're both back this year. This year, Mackenzie's focusing on the eight only. Mc uh, Sadie's still trying to double. And uh, obviously last year Mackenzie got Sadie's attention. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be interesting to see what actually happens. We saw at Arcadia, I think Mackenzie Brown surprised everybody. <laughs> a few seconds of improvement. She went from a 208 to a 20307 to lead the nation. Uh, that was just stunning. And you kind of wonder, Sadie Engelhart's a real competitor. So she's going to want to come back hard. But she's doing the 1600 as well. So that final, if all goes to plan, that's going to be Sadie's fourth race. 16 and 8 on Friday, 16 and then the 8 with Mackenzie Brown waiting for you on Saturday. That's going to be pretty tough. <laughs> you talked about surprising people. I think Mackenzie might even surprise herself. Mm -hmm. uh, Carkening back to her performance at Arcadia, distinctly remember just the look of actual shock and awe on her own face. Uh, obviously a great, fantastic performer and definitely one that will go down in the history books. Obviously one of the fastest times that we've seen here in California. You mentioned Sadie being a competitor. Uh, I know last week she was a touch under the weather, and I did ask her, uh, you know, away from maybe the cameras and everything, you know, how did she feel? And she said, you know, obviously I wasn't feeling my greatest, but I think I'll be okay and be ready for, for the state meet. You get to this stage, you have that talent, that competitive drive. You have Mackenzie's talent, her competitive drive. You put those two together, it has the ingredients to be a fantastic race, strategy, speed, all those things put together. I think it's going to be a great show there. On the team scoring competition, Granada Hills is the heavy favorite by over a dozen points on the boys' side. They would need to have something go wrong. A drop a ton, an injury, a DQ. Otherwise, no one can catch them. They would need to come back to the field. The girls is very different. Six teams within two points on paper. Very tight. One key change this year to the California State meet in the scoring format. In past years, it was eight deep. This year, in a lane event... All nine score. Nine places, ninth place scores half a point. We could have the state champion determined by just half a point. It used to be, if you made the final, and if your team was in the hunt, you're just hoping you don't get last place. Now, even last place scores. So there's that extra bonus and extra pressure to make sure you make it to the final round. Rich, you talked about that. Now you have scoring throughout. It could come down to a half point. You got field events that are close. It could come down to inches. A lot of variables are going into this that are shaping it to be a really, really intriguing meet to watch. Uh, let's shift gears real quick, just in wrapping up. Over the years, you mentioned you've been here quite a few now. What's been probably the, the best memory you have of a, of a statement you've witnessed? <laughs> you know, again, being here, you know, almost two, uh, a decade and a half, I would say the moment that Michael Norman came out here in, uh, I believe it was 2016. Um, it, you know, we talk about electricity and we talk about that anticipation of something great happening. When he got into the starting blocks and he got out there, the sound of silence and the sound of anticipation was something that I will remember, you know, for the rest of my life. And just watching him on this stage knowing the greatness that we were seeing and obviously as he's gone on to do great things the greatness that was in store that's an event and that's a moment for me that i know i will never forget i've got actually two different things one was that phenomenal year in 2008 where <laughs> the meat was strong in general but we saw some performances in the distances you know we saw babcock we saw uh, louis chetela 
uh, believe Hase, I believe was in the mix that year. If, if I might be mistaken, on the boys' side, Herman Fernandez with that amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing double. And then the other thing, I believe was in 2000 and, 2006 it was, Bryshawn Nellum, Long Beach Poly, the golden boy. Four gold medals in a tremendous performance. It's kind of like, and then we see, as you mentioned, Michael Norman come along as well. But <laughs> Bryshawn Nellum, Michael Norman, two great ones. By the way, Bryshawn, Michael, and Quincy Watts, all Olympians, and those three guys in the 200, I believe are numbers one, three, and four all time. And who's number two? <laughs> Roderick Pleasant. Man, you putting pressure on him? He's gonna go out there and do something? <laughs> As you said, obviously greatness has been represented throughout the state of California through the years. And, uh, you know, we expect some some really good things to happen this weekend. And who knows, maybe we'll add another name to that oh, yeah. prestigious list. All right, day one, we're going to go ahead and give you some updates. Follow us on Twitter uh, at Prep Cal Track. We'll be doing some, uh, we'll be allowed to go ahead and try and post some videos as well throughout. And then wrap up interviews after the meet as well. So be sure to tune in. For Jason Eichelberger, I'm Rich Gonzalez, along with our crew here, Mike Kennedy, Jimmy Sue, and Dylan Stewart. We'll see you this weekend.